Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are continuing our deck check-in, doing a Gaida font of hope. So this is going to be a fun one. Okay, so again, she is a one and a white for a two-two flying vigilance. She's an angel, very angel. It says, each other angel you control enters the battlefield with additional plus one, plus one counter on for each angel you already control. So you're just stacking angels here. It's all about like, the more angels you can get, the better. Um, the real downside with the angels is they're very powerful but high CMC, right? They cost a lot of mana to cast. Um, she helps with that, so you can tap to add one white, spend this mana only to cast angels an angel spell. Okay, so she's gonna help a little bit at least, that's something, but yeah. She is really all about the angels, right? If you can just keep casting angels or even just having, you don't have to cast them. That's an important point. This is not a cast trigger, this is just entering. So angel tokens, things like that. Even if you get like a 3-3 angel token. If you have two others, that's a 5-5 five, five already, right? It builds up so fast, it really gets out of control. Uh, I played against one of these like two weeks ago and I was like, oh, I got to take this out before I, you know, it gets off the ground because then there's no stopping it. And uh, so I took it out right away with commander damage and uh, I didn't take the other one out. And it was an infect deck. So I still lost to infect. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Anyway, this deck is actually pretty fast considering it's a mono white. Uh, a, a high and a high CMC creature type. So yeah, this will go quickly. You think on paper, it's like mono white and yeah, angel kindred. You'd uh, think, oh, that's very slow. No, it it's not. It's really not. Again, she adds the plus one plus one counters to an already scary strong thing, right? Plus one plus one counters are good in general, but when you're throwing them on flyers that are already tough um it gets out of hand very quickly you take the game that way so next i'm going to go over some strengths and weaknesses of the deck according to the deck builder slash pilot ollie so we've covered quite a few decks from him before um the tiamat the first one that was over two thousand dollars he did that one um <clears throat> he did the ariat of the charmed apple he did um what else there's more, I'm just spacing right now because I'm not good at remembering stuff, but anyway, yeah. So we've seen a lot from him before. Strengths, low mana cost commander, yep, definitely. Uh, quick to build up an army, that's very nice. Great removal and evasion. Everything's flying, that's a lot of evasion to deal with. Even if they have some reach creatures, you've got like a whole board of flyers. It, uh, you need pretty much like everything to be flying and reach to be able to counter it easily. Easy color fixing. Again, mono white. One of the advantages is you don't have to worry a lot about, you know, your mana. Yeah. Easy to pilot. Again, this is very focused on combat. So yeah, it's, uh, it is easier to, uh, you know, there's fewer other considerations to make. And also with all flyers, combat is a lot easier. There's a lot of ways to like grant everything uh, vigilance, or not a lot of ways. Uh, anyway, you can grant everything vigilance and have everything flying. That makes decision making very simple, right? You don't have to worry about keeping blockers open and uh, just everything has evasion. A good protection spell. So you, there are a lot of, actually thought about doing a whole subsection on protection spells. I did not, maybe I should have. Weaknesses. I don't actually agree with all of these. Board wipes hurt a lot. That is true. I think, yeah, that's the, one of the main things. You're kind of doing Kindred, which is already gets hurt by uh, board wipes. And then what you really want is like a stack of Kindred to get the most value. That, so the board wipes kind of hurt doubly, right? Hurt, hurts the Kindred and hurts the kind of main mechanic you're working off of. Uh, card draw. I don't know. I'd say it's not that bad. And ramp. There's actually pretty good 
ramp and cost reduction both there's quite a good amount of so i feel like that's not a major issue with this deck but we'll see what we can do anyway win cons are only combat no secondary win cons that is true unfortunately i couldn't really think of mana what does have some alternate win cons but they're uh not well suited to this deck i think yeah uh, powerful angels like Avacyn, Angel of Hope, are fun, but high CMC. Yeah, the strongest things in this deck are very high CMC. That is a problem, but again, you do have... He says ramp, but the, between the cost reduction and the ramp this deck does have, I feel like it's, uh, it's alright. And okay, so the TCG uh, deck price right now is 503.16. Not cheap not cheap i am including a link in uh, the description here so if you want to check out this deck or you want to like scope out any of the cards or anything you can do that anyway all right oh sorry not a sponsor tcg player not a sponsor um thoughts on gaida this is a uh, the first mono white, di uh, blah, blah, mono white deck i've covered on this channel which is why i'm wearing my white shirt it has Chuck E. Cheese on it. It's not a Chuck E. Cheese deck, unfortunately. It is a Gaida deck. Chuck E. Cheese would be, you know what? They should do universally on Chuck E. Cheese. That would be amazing. Anyway. Mono White has was underpowered for some time, but due to recent buffs, this has really come into its own. Yeah, Mono White used to be like a running meme kind of trend on Facebook. Where, like, all the memes about Mono White were like, oh, it's so weak compared to the others. Oh, it's so underpowered. They definitely fixed that. I th I, whenever I see one of those now, I'm like, yeah, that's, uh, that meme is about two years out of date now. It's, it's not. It's not. This deck makes use of large number of angels, sorry, a large number of angels, token generators, which all may be boosted by the commander. Again, there's several token generators. I actually didn't do a, a section on that either. I was thinking about it, but this video is going to be like three hours long if I do a section on everything. But yeah, even just like life gain. It's got a life gain sub theme. And yeah, that can make three angels. Uh, not every turn. I think one of those per round and the other two are per turn. So yeah. You can potentially just keep pumping out a bunch of angels on other people's turns even. If they attack you, you block with something with lifelink, you're going to make extra angels that are going to get a whole bunch of plus one plus one counters. So on your turn, you're going to just like, it's really just punishing them for attacking you. Okay, so star cards. Um, this deck looks at, to get a large number of dangerous angels out and gain control of the board. So it's really about gaining control of the board and just taking the game from there. That's really the core strategy here. It is able to get control access to a lot of mechanics, preventing many de other decks from being able to take off. It does have a lot of effects that really like control what other everyone can and can't do, which will prevent a whole bunch of decks from being able to function properly. So yeah, a very much a counter strategy there. Control. So once again, this is all about like preventing those other decks from being able to work properly. So Brazella, Voice of Nightmares, this is your, you can like merge, I forget what it's called now. Uh, you can, yeah, you take two creatures and merge them into this one. So Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink, 9-10. Again, you're going to throw a bunch of uh, plus one, plus one counters on that as well. So absolutely terrifying. Your opponents can't cast spells with converted mana cost three or less. This is especially amazing because like target removal is one of the only things you need to worry about with something like this. Target removal is usually three mana or less, right? You're kind of preventing them from being able to cast their target removal. So yeah. Really, basically a win con right there. Angel of Jubilation. So, one, white, white, white. Again, four CMC for a 3-3 three, three flyer. Other um, non-black creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And yeah, players can't pay life or sacrifice creatures to cast spells or activate abilities. 
So any of those like Rakdos sack decks and things like that, they're just not, they're gonna turn it off. It's gonna be like, yeah, you're not allowed to do that anymore. So yeah, a whole bunch of like, a whole bunch of decks just won't function while this is on the battlefield. Lenvala, Keeper of Silence. So two white white for a three for a flyer, not bad. Mana cost wise is actually not too bad either. Activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control can't be activated. So just no more activated abilities. Even from we've got, you can't like, what we've got so far. So you can't sacrifice or pay life. You can't use activated abilities. You can't cast spells with mana value three or less. Um, again, just spells. Includes creatures, includes like everything. It's going to just like be pretty rough trying to get through that. Fire main commando. Okay, so this is a weirder one. You, whenever, whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. Again, you, he says he wants more card draw. I feel like he's got it, but anyway. Whenever another player attacks with two or more creatures, they draw a card if none of those creatures attack to you. Get all about getting people to attack other players. Um, this is going to be very valuable. So it's like the real control there is like giving someone else a benefit for like leaving you alone. Um, that's very strong. I think that effect is better than like a lot of pillow fort things. People think the pillow fort is so great. Um, paying two mana is a hassle. Um, just straight up, I get to draw a card is better. Um, yeah. Sarah's Emissary, uh, four white, 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 seven CMC. So getting way up there, seven, seven flyer though. Uh, and it, when it enters the battlefield, choose a card type. You and creatures you control have protection from the chosen card type. That's huge, right? You could just say like sorcery. Hey, no one have to worry about sorceries. Again, it gives protection. So if it is like a board wipe, that would still work, right? So I probably wouldn't say sorcery, just because sorceries are more likely to be able to get around that. But you could say creature and boom, all of your stuff is creatures can't target you. You can't get attacked and um, all of your creatures can attack without getting blocked because they all have pitch from creatures. Uh, crazy. Life gain. So this is one of the main sub themes here. Resplendent Angel, one white white for a 3-3 three, three flyer. Three CMC is pretty good for angels. At the beginning of each end step, each, if you gain five or more life this turn, create a 4-4 four, four angel creature token with flying and vigilance. Flying and vigilance? You're able to do this every single turn. So if you have even just a blocker with lifelink, so no one's going to want to attack you because you're going to keep throwing those angels into the battlefield. Ah, uh, crazy. And then for six, until end of turn, it gets plus two, plus two, and gains lifelink. So yeah, you can use that to activate itself. Um, six mana for that effect is a lot and kind of not worthwhile. I, I would say, I'd almost expect it to be like, all creatures you control get plus two plus two and gain lifelink for six mana that is more reasonable i think but anyway archangel of thune um three white white for a three four flyer lifelink again lifelink as well whenever you gain life put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control each this is especially huge for your commander because your commander is the only one that's not going to automatically have those um, counters being put on it. It's, it has to be on the battlefield to put the counters on the other thing so it can't get the counters. Here this is going to be something where you can potentially get to like a win con territory. If you want to do commander damage this is going to get your commander boosted up. Um, also remember it's each time you gain life. Every life link is a separate trigger. You, get, you do the damage all at once, you heal all at once, they are considered separate triggers. So if you set off four lifelink triggers, all of your creatures are going to get plus one, plus one counters four times, okay? So that gets carried away fast. 
Bishop of Wings for two white. This is not an angel, unfortunately. Human cleric, whenever an angel enters the battlefield under your control, you gain four life. This is so crazy because you can have like life gain creating uh, angels that will enter the battlefield and gain you more life. Just gets, I mean, unfortunately it does it at end of turn, so it's not going to keep making the tokens. It doesn't go infinite or anything, but yeah. Whenever an angel you control dies, create a 1-1 spirit token with flying. Backup is always nice, right? True Conviction. This is definitely one of those win con cards as well. Three white, 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 six CMC for this enchantment. It sounds like a lot, but what does it do? Creatures you control have Double Strike and Light Flank. Double Strike and Light Flank. Again, there are three of these effects where if you gain life, you can create tokens. Um, double Strike and Life Flank is going to gain you that life on pretty much anything. Like any angel in this deck, I think you can have Double Strike and Life Flank and you will be gaining that for life unless they die on like the first strike. So th something else is going to need like flying first strike to be able to block them just to prevent them from like. Uh, anyway, yeah. Book of Exalted Deeds, three white for a legendary artifact. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a 3-3 three, three angel. Again, kind of one of those again. It is only on your turn, unfortunately, not each end step. And for three white, you can tap and exile the Book of Exalted Deeds, put an enlightened counter on target angel, and it gains. You can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win the game. So you're even if someone does manage to like eat through your life gain and uh, get you down to zero, you could potentially just activate this and then, boom, you can't lose the game. They can't win the game. Um, basically, another like way to kind of block and control there. Cost reduction. This is super important because the angels. We've had a few angels that aren't high CMC. There is even an angel that's only one to cast. I think it's a one, two flyer. So yeah, but it's uh, usually quite high. So Star Starheim Aspirant, two and a white for a two, two. Uh, human clear, non-angel, unfortunately. Angel spells you cast cost two less to cast. There you go. Okitra's Mon Monument is three also i want to point out this is a legendary artifact so it's legendary that's going to be important later white creature spells you cast cost one less to cast so all of your all of your creatures are white right this is really nice because even like starheim aspirant would be only two to cast and then you're going to save two mana immediately on your next angel spell so you could potentially if you have this on the battlefield cast starheim aspirant and then cast an angel and uh starheim aspirant is basically free right uh so whenever you cast a creature spell create a one one white uh warrior creature token with vigilance sure why not herald's horn this is always something i like to throw in decks for three it's an artifact and when it comes into the battlefield choose a creature type creature that uh spells you cast the chosen type cost one less to cast so you're gonna have an enter, choose angel, all angels minus one. So at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it is a creature card of the chosen type, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. So you're always gonna just check if you got an angel on top, and if so, go straight into your hand and then you draw a card. So yeah, um, you're basically drawing two as long as there's an angel on top. Um, you do have to reveal it, I guess, is a bit of a downside, but this is another reason why I look at this deck and go, you think card draw is a big problem? Hmm, ha, huh, okay. And ramp, I, I don't know, anyway. Okay, Pearl Medallion, this is actually under four bucks right now. I thought it was way more expensive. Maybe I was just always wrong. Anyway, for two mana, white spells you cast cost one less to cast. Again, white spells, this and the Keatra's Monument would uh, stack, right? So all your white spells would be minus two. That's uh, not too shabby in a deck that's one of white. Herald of War, three white white. 
for a 3-3 flyer. And whenever it attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Okay, remember, if you have more angels in the battlefield, as soon as he comes in, your uh, commander is throwing plus one, plus one counters on him. Okay, so the synergy here is crazy. Angel spells and human spells you cast cost one less to cast for each plus one, plus one counter on Herald of War. So yeah, you can, even if there's two other angels on the battlefield, when this guy comes in, well, your commander is an angel, so if there's one more besides your commander, and then you cast him, he's already going to give you, like, two cost reduction on angels, and it's just going to keep going up. Um, ho. Oh. The plan. So how does this deck play? Step one, always ramp. I always have ramp step one because, hey, that's the first thing that you got to think about. Step two, angels. Yeah, no, no doubt. Step three, win con. Hey, there you go. The win con, again, the, one of the criticisms to the guy who made this deck that Ollie uh, had is that it, the only win con is combat. Technically true, but there's a lot of different ways to win through combat. So it is technically one win con, but there's like multiple paths to that one win con. So is it one win con or is it multiple that just kind of fall under the same umbrella? I don't know. Anyway. Ramp. Oh, I'm going to have some my Twinnings Tea. Twinnings Tea. A cup of love. Not a sponsor, but they should be. My throat's getting a little sore. Again, my wife very viciously made me sick. I'm joking, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, Twinning's Tea has uh, got me all sorted. Got English breakfast again. It's one of my favorites. Smothering Tithe. It's hard to beat Smothering Tithe for ramp. Uh, three and a white for enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card that... Excuse me? That player may pay two. If the player doesn't, you create a colorless treasure token artifact with... Tap sack. It's a treasure. Every time they draw, if they don't pay two extra, you get to make treasure. Um, oh boy. Throne of Eldraine for five. I wish I wanted this so bad. My Eldraine opening. I didn't get it. I was very disappointed. Legendary. Again, legendary. As soon as Eldraine enters the battlefield, choose a color. White. Add four mana of the chosen color. Spend this mana only to cast mono color spells of that color. Not a problem, right? Not a problem. And for three and tap, draw two cards. Spend this mana only to... Oh, uh, sorry. Sp Spend mana only of the chosen color to activate this ability. <sighs> you should never use this for card draw. I'm just going to say that. Um, it'd be a really weird situation. Like, usually for, if you tap a land and use it to draw a card instead, that's not so bad. You're losing like one mana. This is costing you four mana and you got to pay mana to activate it. Essentially, it's six mana to draw uh, two cards. Is that worth it? Maybe in some situations it is. Usually, I would say no. Hopefully, no. Otherwise, you're really hard up for card draw. Anyway, Sword of the Animist. Oh, my God. I I have two of these, and I was like, I've never really thought about putting them in monocolored decks before. I should have. That's a really good idea. I just want to use them for mana fixing in like Wooburg decks and like uh, Mardu or something that can't ramp. But anyway, uh, two equip creature gets plus one plus one. Again, it is equipment, of course. Whenever equip creature attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. So this is just gonna go get you an extra land every single turn. I feel like that's your ramp sorted. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Battle Angels of Tear. Two white, white. Again, angels. Love it. A 4-4 four, four flying with myriad as well. Whenever Battle Angels of Tear deal damage to a player, 
Draw a card if that player has more cards in hand than you. Then you create a treasure token if the player controls more lands than each other player. Then you gain three life if that player has more life than each other player. Again, myriad means when it attacks, it just it's going to make copies that attack all every possible person. So it's going to in a standard commander game, you're going to have three opponents attack one. It's automatically going to make two copies that will be attacking as well. And yeah, they'll just go in and you'll get a bunch of stuff. Card draw and mana and uh, what else is there? And life gain. Hopefully you're ahead in life, but maybe not. If not, that's incredible. Knight of the White Orchid. Uh, okay. I don't want to sound like really um, snarky or anything, but like... What is this doing in this deck? Why is this here? Um, I actually got... I kind of feel like I'm watching the original uh, Cinderella movie and then all of a sudden Yosemite Sam walks in. It's like, you, you, you don't belong here. Why are you here? Okay, so for two white, it's a 2-2. Two, two. First strike, Human Knight. Okay. And when it, uh, when it enters the battlefield... If an opponent controls more lands than you, so if an opponent controls more lands than you, first of all, uh, you may search your library for a planes card, put it into the battlefield, then shuffle. So if someone has more lands than you, then you can go sh uh, find one planes one time when he enters. The one saving grace that came up for this was a. Uh, you can recur it. There's a lot of recursion in this deck, so you could potentially like pull it out and just drop it onto the battlefield and get some like extra. You need uh, someone else to be ramping ahead of you, though. So I, uh, I'm not crazy about this. I think if you have like a way to give it haste, so you can keep getting it to the graveyard. And a reliable way to keep recurring it and you can guarantee someone has more lands than you every single time then maybe it's okay um hope you're not first player i guess um still you've got like sort of the analyst and things like that that are going to keep potentially pulling out extra lands and dropping them so are, are they going to ramp ahead of you maybe yeah maybe maybe not um this is such a like unreliable card i think i don't like it okay i'm not gonna all right angels again battle angels of cheer we already talked about angel skirmisher i love this one Four white. White is a 4-4 four, four flyer. Again, angel. So that 4-4 four, four flyer is probably not, is going to be at least a 5-5. Five, five, at least. If your commander's out. At the beginning of each combat, choose first strike, vigilance, or lifelink. Creatures you control gain that ability until end of turn. All of your creatures just like, hey, everything is lifelink now. So if you block, you lose it. Or everything, or sorry, I mean... Everything has first strike now. If you block, you lose it. Or everything has lifelink. I'm going to set off all of my lifelink or my life gain triggers uh, this turn. I'm just making a whole bunch of tokens and stuff. Or, uh, yeah, vigilance. Um, I just don't need to worry about blocking. I'm going to all, all, everything is just going to be able to attack and uh, block, and I don't care. And also, any mana rock or mana dwarfs I have can still tap for mana and attack. Um, yeah. Oh, Angel of Ties. We talked about all... Oh, no, we didn't. One white, white, white. Yeah, we did. Ah. Anyway, so as long as Archangel of Ties is untapped, because she can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control, unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. Great. As long as Archangel of Ties is attacking, uh, creatures can't block you unless their controller pays one. So basically, this is like 
a pillow fort, but an aggressive pillow fort that makes it so they can't even block? I love it. Also, 4 CMC for 3 5 flyers, not bad. Anyway, Emeria Shepherd, uh, 5 white white for a 4 4 flyer. CMC 7 for a 4 4 flyer. That's not great, but. Landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return target non land permanent uh, from your graveyard to your hand. Non land permanent to hand. I wish it was non, -per uh, non permanence as well, but oh well. If that land is a plains, you may return the non land permanent card to the battlefield instead. You've got just planes, right? So you're going to be throwing planes in. And especially if you've got like Sword of the Animist going to be throwing an extra planes in. So you're just going to be recurring whatever you want straight to the battlefield. Just probably twice per turn. Um, whew. Alright, that's mean. Righteous Valkyrie for 2 and a white, a 2-4. Again, I love the CMC. For a 2-4 flyer, 3 for 2 for flyers. Definitely worth it. Again, when it comes to the battlefields, it's going to be a 3-5 minimum. So... Whenever another angel or cleric enters the battlefield under your control, gain life equal to it, that creature's toughness. That's a lot of life gain. Especially, it's going to add up with your, you know, making tokens and things. You can just, like, make your tokens, put plus one, plus one counters on it, and then gain toughness equal to that. You're going to set off all your uh, life gain triggers, no problem. As as long as you have at least seven or more life than your starting total, creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Do you need more? I guess you got more, so there you go. Win con number one, commander damage. What I always look at for win cons first is commander damage. Um, this is not really built with that in mind, but it can do it. Again, Gaida, Font of Hope, your 2-2, two, two, Flying Vigilance. Uh, what you need to do is like again commander damage is 21 so 2 is quite a stretch to 21 right let's look at what we got though a chroma's will for 3 and a white again if you're if you commander you're going to choose both of these modes so uh, flying vigilance I think you already have that and double strike okay what she needs is double strike and that's what this does it also gives lifelink indestructible and protection from all colors Basically, it means you're not only getting the double strike, you're going to get through. They can't block you unless they have, like, colorless flying things can block you. That's it. Um, probably getting through. And then Merchant of Truth. So one of the sub-themes here is Clues. This is two white white. I love Merchant of Truth. Angel Detective. Hilarious combination. I watched that show. Um... For a 2-5 flyer, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, investigate. Nice, and clues you control have exalted. Exalted means you can tap them and give something plus one, plus one. So again, if you create nine of those uh, clue tokens, which is not super hard to do, tap them, give your commander plus nine, double strike, there you go. You're already at 22, so she's one-shotting anyone. Uh, also, there's ways we can give you your commander plus one, plus ones, and things like that. This is not the only way to do that, is what I'm saying. There's multiple ways to get a double strike. There's multiple ways to get uh, bonuses on your commander here. So, yeah. A lot of ways that you can start one-shotting people. One-sided combat. I love this one as well. Okay, True Conviction hopefully is down already when you do this. Creatures you control have Double Strike and Lifelink. Again, just uh, Double Strike. Love it. And for 4 White White, this Angel is going to come in and when it enters the battlefield, destroy all tapped creatures. Ideally, you're just going to like make it so even if they do have a bunch of untapped blockers, are they flyers? Are they? Do they? Can they deal with like the evasion? I doubt it. it this is going to probably be a win, right? This is just going to like clear out their boards and let you just march in and take them down. 
No blocks. Oh, we talked about this one briefly as well. Sarah's Emissary? Just choose protection from creatures. And then all of your creatures have protection from creatures? So they can't be blocked? And you have protection from creatures, so you can't be attacked. Again, as it enters the battlefield, choose a card type. Creature? You and creatures you control have protection from the card type. There you go. You can't lose to combat. They can't win with combat. Um, great little combo there. I guess not a combo. I mean a combination of effects, not a combo. Combat, though. Again, Avacyn, Angel of Hope. We have 8 CMC for an 8-8 Flying Vigilance, Indestructible. Other permanents you control have Indestructible. Just give everything Indestructible. Always a good thing. Give everything indestructible, play any board wipe. Hey, great. Or if any of your opponents play a board wipe that doesn't exile. They really need the exile to deal with this. Righteous Valkyrie, we talked about already. Just give everything plus two, plus two, and indestructible. Luminarch's Ascension. Here's another token generator for you. You can pay one and a white once it has four counters on it. Um, to make a 4-4 angel creature token with the flying onto the battlefield. Uh, activate this ability only if Luminarx essential has 4 quest counters. But again, you can activate this more than once per turn. And with every angel that comes in, there's more and more plus 1 plus 1 counters going on that angel. And every angel is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah, it just... you win. Suggestions. So here I'm looking for upgrade cards that are serve the same, same general purpose. So I'm not trying to like... In the last one, I did Amara and I kind of like retooled the deck. That's a lot, right? I'm not looking to like completely redo this deck. Or like take it in a whole different direction. I'm just looking to like add some upgrades. So this is real suggestion this time. Again, I, I do, I'm focusing on things that are $2 or less on the TCG market value, not a sponsor again. No, they're not. Uh, and there is one recommendation that's just over that $2 mark. Very frustrating. My budget cards keep going over the my $2 mark. Can you stop? It's getting annoying. It keeps happening. Anyway. Replaceable cards. Uh, my son is back. I'm recording on a week the weekend, so unfortunately my son is back out here. Hopefully I don't get attacked by any trademark pink Nintendo characters this time, but we'll see. If you hear a random noise, it's my son playing with Lego in the background. Emiria's Call. Um, 7 CMC for this sorcery. Create two 4-4 four, four white angels. That's good. And non-angel creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Okay. Making the angels, making non-angels indestructible. There are some non-angels that are useful in this deck, but at sorcery speed, especially, I don't I don't get it. It is a land on the other side, which is nice. Knight of the White Orchid. <sighs> okay. I'm not gonna rant about Knight of the White Orchid. I don't like, I don't like it. It doesn't make sense for that to be in this deck, okay? Undo Inversion. Six white white, destroy all non-land permanents. That's just a very, very expensive, uh, a high, or sorry, a high CMC board wipe. Um, it is nice that it destroys all non-land permanents, that's for sure, but at the same time, I don't know. Uh, eight. It does flip. It does also, you know, count as land as well. So that can be nice. Okay, this is the one where people are probably gonna like be like, "What are you talking about, Joe?" Swords to plowshares. One white. Exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. Okay. Swords to plowshares is an amazing card, but we've got three other cards that allow you to like counter it's okay <sighs> okay three other cards that are removal that uh yeah exile so yeah we've got path to exile which you can also use as ramp for yourself that costs one we've got stroke of midnight and we've got um um generous gift both of those are 
very flexible and can hit things besides creatures. So I think they're just way, way better. Um, do we need four ways to exile creatures in this deck? It's not a terrible idea, but I think we can do a little bit better. Especially, yeah, something or better that can be flexible, more flexible is what I mean, yeah. Karmic Guide. Um, this is an angel, which is nice. Three white white for a two two. And it has an echo. So you gotta pay three white white or, or it gets destroyed. What this does is recursion. You've got a lot of other ways to do recursion. Frankly, better. Um, so I feel like this is lacking somewhat. And Witch Enchanter is three and a white for a two two. And when it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. It's also a land. So I'm getting rid of all of these, a whole bunch of these uh, lands. There are two sided cards that are lands on one side. Um, that might not be the best idea, but oh well. Okay, Emiria's Call, what would I change it with? It's okay. Your temple is under attack. I've been talking about this card nonstop for months now. I feel like this should already be in this deck. I, I have an extra one, I'll give him. Your temple is under attack, choose one. Creatures you control gain indestructible. There you go. Board wipe, don't worry about it. Or you dr and target upon each draw two cards or card draw. Two of the things you're worried about on this list. This card doesn't. For two and a white at instant speed. Uh, much, much better. Knight of the White Orchid. Reluctant role model. This one is so crazy. It's under a dollar right now. I almost don't want to put it on the list because I feel like it's going to go up in value. I have, I think, four in my cart right now. Uh, so for a 1 and a white, it's a 2-2. Two, two. Survival. At the beginning of your second main phase, if it's tapped, put a flying lifelink or plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So it can gain lifelink, flying, or another plus 1 plus 1 just by being tapped. And yeah, whenever it or another creature you control dies, if it ha had counters on it, put those counters on up to one target creature. This also is really nice, not just because it's basically an an ozolith that lets you be more selective. The ozolith is almost 30 bucks. This is under $1. Frankly, it's better because you can take counters off one creature and put them straight onto another creature. Not all of the count counters going to one thing and then one thing putting all the counters onto one other thing. Also, this is going to work great for your win cons because if you want to do commander damage, very, very easy. You're going to have a whole mess of plus one, plus one counters. You can just throw in your commander and uh, double strike. Win. Done. Anyway, yeah. Undo Invasion. Split up. I feel like this is much better. One white, white. This is right at the $2 mark. So yeah, destroy all tapped creatures or destroy all untapped creatures. Gives you the option. It's a sorcery speed, so I think probably untapped? Or destroy all tapped, I mean, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I tried to convince him to go back to the office and play his game some more, and he wasn't having it. Anyway, Swords Plowshares, really good card, I agree. Parting Gust, I, I like this better. It is more expensive, it's higher CMC. It's white, white instead of white, but you can gift a tap fish, exile non-token creature. If the gift wasn't promised, return that to the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter. So you can exile something and put it straight back. You can flicker it and get a, get a plus one. And uh, if you promise the, the uh, gift, if you give someone a fish, just exile. They don't come back. Um, so yeah, it is kind of like sword plushes where you, ex you can exile and give them something. Instead of uh, them gaining life, it's going to be a tap fish token. Like, who cares? You can exile their commander and, like, give them a fish. It's so mean. Uh, funny. Mean. It's scary. Huh? It's scary. Okay. Sorry to hear that. Karmic Guide. 
I would change with uh, Sapphira Sky's Blade. This is the one that's over $2 now, and I'm quite unhappy about it. Four white, white, white. Again, you may pay one white and tap four untapped creatures to control with flying rather than this cost. So it's seven CMC. But if you tap three flyers and pay one white, better than Convoke. Really, every flyer is basically paying like one and a white, right? Or not quite, I guess, but anyway. Um, flying Lifelink 7-7. Seven, seven. Other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. Another way to give all of your uh, flyers indestructible. So you got Avacyn, or you could do this. Either way, we're happy, right? And which enchanter I want to change with? Search for Glory. Search for Glory is an amazing card in this deck. Uh, this is a tutor that's two and a white. Uh, basically, it's going to let you... What we care about is that you can tutor out a legendary card. Not legendary creature, legendary card. There's legendary artifacts, there's legendary creatures, there's legendary... All kinds of legendary things there. So, yeah, we are going to be able to kind of do whatever you need is what you're going to go get. If you need more mana, great. Uh, go get Throne of Eldring if you need more ramp. Again, it's kind of mana, but maybe not the same thing. If you want more lands coming in, go get Sword of the Animus. That is legendary. If you want some kind of like angel to do some kind of huge effect, hey, you've got, I think, four or five of those? So we've got just plenty of legendary cards in this deck. You might as well take advantage of it. There's a lot that also goes straight to like win con territory. So you're going to be able to have a lot more control over what happens in the game with this. More options. These are ones I wanted to put in, but I couldn't really find cards to take out. Taking cards out of well-planned decks is actually much harder than finding cards to put in. Grateful Apparition for one and a white is a 1-1 one, one flyer. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, pro proliferate. So you're just going to be able to keep proliferating those plus ones and plus ones, which is very nice. Glory. Ollie, the guy who made this deck, is actually the one who introduced me to this card. So I guess I'm going... I'm Maybe uh, telling him something you already knows, but yeah. Three white white for this flying incarnation. Three three flyer, sorry. Once it's in the graveyard, you can pay two and a white to give all of your creatures protection from any color you want. Once again, they just can't be blocked by that color. So it, even if you, uh, you know, you spend six, the, the odds of someone having more than two colors of creatures out and a creature that doesn't even have that color, right? Not likely. If they're multicolored, that still counts as b being both colors. So yeah, probably your win con right there. And Crumb and Get It. Partly I want to include this one because of the name. I think just the, the punny name is great. Oh, Bloomboro, you did it again. Crumb and Get It, one white. You can gift a food. Gift, I love the gift mechanic. Target creature you can control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So this can help you with, with your uh, commander damage win con, first of all. If the gift was promised, this creature also gains indestructible until end of turn. Keeping your stuff alive. Really, really important in this deck. Having as many ways to do it as possible is great. Um, and this will do that. In summary, so this deck is made to show what Mono White can do. Uh, this is a highly aggressive deck that is made with competitiveness in mind. A lot of the decks you mix are made to be more fun and interesting to play against. This is the kind of deck you pull out when you're like, okay, time to like, you know, do some damage. It's nice to have those as well. I think it's good to have an assortment of like power levels of decks and competitiveness of decks. And this is definitely on the high end. Again, he also has Tiamat, so maybe he's got two of those, but... I th look, I think this is built mostly as like an experiment about how strong can Mono White be. And it is strong. So I have featured several decks he has built, including the budget and fun decks. This is made to show what command the com commander can do. Again, it's like the commander and Mono White. So yeah, 
This is more of a serious deck, not a fun deck, but I, I think you need both, right? Anyway, take it easy. That's okay. Yeah.